play football because you love it, but it's not about you. It's about what could I do to make my team better. My brother's out there on the field with me just working just as hard as I am. Hey, this is rap tempo! It's pretty much just teaching us how to be real men, teaching us how to do things the right way. It's more than just winning. That's the fun of the game. This thing's about being built for life. purpose of this program, I think this is important you know this, is a team that's going to be built to win. And there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to win big. But more importantly is build them in for the rest of their life. And I mean that sincerely. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I think we got coaches and players that are extremely passionate about football. Uh, we need guys here that love football as much as anything. But if it's just all about football here, I think we're doing this thing the wrong way. I think this university, this city, um, has way too much to offer to just be about football. Every year after the season's over, I'd interview our seniors and I would always ask them, you know, how would you describe our program or what's the best thing about this program? And I would always think that they would talk about winning and they never said that. They didn't ever bring that up. They always brought up that it's about improvement, it's about the brotherhood. We talk about what a real man looks like. You know, those are all some of the themes that run through this Built for Life. Not only does he teach like football stuff, he also teaches like life lessons and he had a very good record, so he just taught us that, you know, within those great teams, they all were together, they all came together. I think when you're really doing this coaching thing, I mean, you're not just coaching football, you are coaching life. It's ready. It's ready. We'll find out. Here we go, fellas. Let's get some work done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He, we always, he always wanted that team bond and you know being connected all as one. And our defense playing as one and offense playing as one. It, it all, it all connects together. You know, we all feed off of each other. Let's see if we can get something done here. Challenge these guys. Challenge them. Challenge them. Go KJ. Here we go, KJ. KJ. Okay, okay. Great eyes, great eyes, Joe. Great eyes. Nice. Hey, full speed. This is live, guys. Wrap them up. When it comes to football, he's a very serious dude, but he knows when to turn that and turn turn that on and turn that off. And when it just be like a just be a role model to us. What are we doing there, Hayden? No more bucket hat, huh? Yeah. A little alternate. You gotta keep it a little, yeah. little loose. Want to talk. Yeah, I don't want to get you can't stale. Can't look like uh, Bill Murray from Caddyshack yeah. every day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to get too predictable out here. When head coach Chris Peterson left Boise State to take over the Washington football program in 2014, he brought with him the highest winning percentage in Division One football. But not everyone was ready for change, like young defensive lineman JoJo Mathis who was originally recruited by Washington's previous coach, Steve Sarkeesian. I wasn't, I didn't really want a coach to change, you know, um, had a coach like recruiting me since, you know, freshman year of high school and everything. And so when coach, he came in, you know, it was hard for me just like accepting it, not willing to 
just like give him a chance, you know? When I first came here, I, I, I was very skeptical whether he was a guy that was gonna, you know, if he could do, if he could do Bill for life, if he could do this new Husky way. I remember we used to have beans and I used to tell him, Mike, I'm ready to leave. Coach Pete wrote on a piece of paper, adversity is a key component of a champion, but the enemy of the weak. I, I, it stuck with me. Like, as soon as he wrote that down, I, I remember that, like, it was yesterday. And if it's hard for me right now, am I the weak or am I a champion? I'm not going to be the weak and just be like, it's, it's hard, I'm going to give up. Or I don't like it, I'm going to give up. You know, life is hard. The responsibilities of a leader on the Husky defense are challenging enough, but Mathis has taken on even greater responsibilities, thanks to the recent arrival of his first child. The biggest part of my growth is, you know, having my son and the process I went through with my wife, being pregnant, being a college athlete, it's hard, but I feel like that was the real growth of me becoming who I am right now. Because you're not a child no more, you got you to man up. They're, de they're depending on you, so I feel like that was really, like, me growing up. You know, I think he's grown by leaps and bounds and matured, and, and uh, we're really proud of him. The way he talks to us, it's setting us up for our futures and uh, making us better men. So that's why I stayed here, and, and I, I'm, I'm happy I did. Successful teams are close teams and Coach Peterson is making sure his players are working together both on and off the field. As many free throws as you can make in two minutes. Go ahead, Nick Gam. Go to let him know what it really is. I warm up with the softball. Yeah, I'm gonna light someone up. The Built for Life mentality focuses on helping young men become the best version of themselves and achieving their goals. But if their goal is to sing professionally, Coach Peterson will need to work overtime. Coach Peterson has another exercise in mind. One that requires little talent, but plenty of determination. When we first got there, we didn't think we were actually going to do it. We just thought it was a joke, and so they were like, yeah, you guys have to run it up. Get your offense over there. I hated that. I really did. We had to run from the bottom of the space needle to the top of the space needle, taking the stairs, taking these little narrow stairs. Some people got scared of heights. I'm personally, I'm scared of heights. Oh! No, no, no! <laughs> you know, that was one way of bringing us together. I made mean, us closer as a team, but I for sure hated that. I couldn't be, couldn't be better. The Drive, presented by Tire Pros. Find your local dealer today at tirepros.com. While most Washington players look to build on last season's success, one player is just happy to step back on the field. John Ross, he is just lightning. After establishing himself as an explosive playmaker for the Husky offense in his sophomore year, wide receiver John Ross suffered back-to-back -back knee injuries, forcing him to miss all of last season. I initially tore my right knee during the season, and then once I got um, surgery for that, I got out in spring and tore my ACL like the first day. It was hard, just like watching everyone, um, the game day atmosphere, not being 
able to be a part of it. I feel it's good to get back. You know, an ACL's a long setback. I mean, he that guy was as strong and as focused as I've seen anybody, and he looks awesome out there right now, and it really started way back when. It was times they had to tell me to slow down just because I wanted to hurry up and speed the process up, and I just wanted to play. I was so hungry to play. For him to come back, be heavier, 20 pounds heavier, and run a faster 40, it's like, it's amazing. It's like, wow, like, <laughs> anything's possible because, shoot, that man can run. I'm not sure, like, exactly how fast I am. Um, just working on my speed still. It's crazy. I remember my freshman year, I was like, dang, this guy's fast. And now I'm like, this guy's blazing. He's probably one of the, the fastest guys I've ever seen on the field. He's very explosive, good route runner, good with the ball in his hands, and, you know, I think definitely a, a good leader on the offense. I mean, he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, can change the game quickly. Overall, you put it on tape, you can do it again, because we got some good clips to watch here in a second. Regardless of Ross's big play ability, if the dogs are to reach their potential, they will need quarterback Jake Browning to lead them there. I mean, this is a good, good rep. Yeah, I was looking at it, and then someone yelled, like, I was looking, I was like, that doesn't look right. Like, is this going to rotate to five, or what's this going to do? You know, obviously, very into football. I think I like, I like the competition part of it, always having a challenge. Make sure you're watching tape, grinding tape. Red zone and third down emphasis tomorrow. All right, we're out of here on the break. Ready? He's really competitive. He's got great discipline. You know, he can stay after something for a long period of time. See what you got. Let's see some, let's see some acting. Hey, you're kitty kitty. Nice, good ball. There's not another player on the field that, you know, knows what's going on on the offensive side as well as he does. Jake's a good dude. He's a great leader. He'll pull you to the side like I feel like any good quarterback, great quarterback would, and uh, really tell you how it is. So, I mean, sometimes he'll humble you. So I feel like I appreciate him. And he, he'll humble himself even sometimes. He's not, he's not holding you to some high standard and not holding himself to it. He's holding everybody to it, and he's, and he's really out there just trying to do his best and win games. Hey, you put it right on that upfield number. Good job. Having a year under his belt, even in spring ball, you could see that he had total command of the offense. We trust him. We got his back 100%. We were 7-6 and six last year, and that's, you know, I didn't come here to, to be a 7-6 and six football team. We came here to, to win games, and, you know, that's definitely the goal. During practice, it's offense against defense. But after the final whistle, the Huskies are one big family. Having a team bond is key because you want to have that trust in your teammates that he's going to get the job done. I think just knowing that everybody has each other's back, and you feel like you're a part of the team and not just here to just catch a, catch a football or throw a football. You know, you're here for something greater than yourself. It's for, you know, the Washington football team, for the university and all that. And I think we've done our best to create that. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I said, thank you. Hey, hey scrap oh, You ready? You trying to ice bath with us? No. We throw him in? Sure. Toss this guy in? It's warm. I promise you it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we just have a great time with the offense, and they have a great time with us. And, you know, you see, we love to compete. I was chilling, man, and I was like, I'm not trying to cook. And he was just, the ball is burning, it's on fire, it's on fire. <laughs> and I looked over there, and the whole grill was like, in flames. <laughs> no. Get out, we out here. Oh, get out, get out, get out. Quick change, quick change. For the best in live music, entertainment, and comedy, the Emerald Queen Casino is the place to be. Pop rock legend, Rick Springfield, Saturday, October 1st. The godfather of theatrical rock, Alice Cooper, Thursday, October 20th. Hot Country with Frankie Ballard, Wednesday, October 26th. Only at the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. As a new season unfolds in Seattle, playmakers from the Pac-12's best defense return with a supreme confidence and an intimidating nickname. For defense, we have Death Row. I think the name says it all. You know, we, we come out there and we're not playing. Our mindset is determined. We just hate to lose. We got savages. We just monsters out there. And it's intercepted. What a play. Buda 
Baker. Buda Baker. Unbelievable. I like the way their defense gets after people. Drilled by Azeem Victor. Victor, another defensive touchdown. They're just so physical, so explosive at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. It's just who they are. I, I think they are confident. You know, they played well as a group last year. We have a lot of these guys coming back. Like uh, a lot of people have said, we have a really good defense, so going against them every day definitely helps. Uh, it can be frustrating, but that's a pretty good defense, one of the better ones. We, you know, we'll see and we get to practice against them every day. As a leader of the Washington defense, middle linebacker Azeem Victor makes certain he and his teammates are well prepared for game day. You know, I want opponent teams to come in and, and know that they should be on their toes and that it's not going to be that easy coming in here. I think he's the best. I feel like, hey, if I can, if I can make him miss, he's going to make me get better. We want people to see us and say, okay, that's a, that's a pretty intense defense. And, um, you know, we go out there and we, we're having fun too, you know. Just out there, and, and even it shows in practice, you know, we make a play, everybody runs over there, and we're dancing and just having a good time. Sid, you ever got a training camp ball? You went back to back? <laughs> Sid, go! Long side, short side, tamp, right there, perfect, Sid. That's for sure the best defense I've ever played against. And uh, those guys know how, those guys are all dogs. I, I, can't, I can't say much else about them, but they know how to play football. We haven't been tested against another opponent. And so we'll see when, you know, and how we respond. You know, that, that's what I want to know is how we're going to respond when we're really challenged. And, you know, all early signs are encouraging. But that's, that's why we're excited to go play. Training camp is coming to a close. And the Huskies are famished. Hungry to meet their first opponent. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. We can uh, battle with our teammates, but it's never the same intensity as a, as a real game when you're playing against different opponents. And, um, you know, I feel like everybody is ready for uh, records. I'm tired of hitting y'all. That's yeah. a joke. I'm tired of seeing you two every day. <laughs> you know, I think everybody at that gets to that point in camp where it's like we're just ready to go in somebody else besides our own defense. And the more and more you go against somebody, the more and more you're ready to kind of, you know, go into a game one and, you know, have the offense and defense come together and play their team. You ready for Rutgers? Yeah, yeah, we ready up. Yeah. That game is going to set the tone for the season, I feel like. That game is going to tell, tell us who we are as a team, not just on defense, who, are, who we are as, you know, you the football team. Will they have us ranked? That's cool. But what, what are we going to really do about it? I know we're going to make something happen, baby. we got to make something happen. With the highest preseason ranking in 14 years, expectations are sky high in Seattle. Best defense in the Pac-12 last year. Are they the best defense now? I believe so. I'd ask you to talk. Huskies rank 14. A lot of hype around Chris Peterson's squad. They know the hype is there. They're not ignoring it. They just say we have to prove it on the field. I love that. There's a lot of noise out there. A lot of noise in the world that we live in. A lot of it good about us. And a lot of naysayers and doubters. And none of that matters. I get messages all day of, Oh, you guys are gonna do this, or you guys are gonna do that, and you know, I, I never, I never reply because it's just we're not really into uh, feeding in what like the social media says, and you know, believing in the hype. We we have our set of goals and what we want to get done, and you know, it's just it's just a matter of completing. Nobody's trying to out to prove something for just themselves. We're out to prove something as a team and go out there and compete. It doesn't matter what it is. It really doesn't. It's we're out there to ball out. Mm. 
that feeling. You know, you just hear all those fans, even when you're in the locker room and, you know, just hearing them, you know, it just gives you a rush. And once you get out to the tunnel and, you know, you see little kids' hands dangling out from the, uh, from the ramp and you see that smoke, it's just, you know, you just go into that zone. It's a hard feeling to explain, but it's, it's pretty cool. backfield for Laviano. He'll run, and he has the ball popped free, and Washington has it. If you're going to run on this dog's defense, you got to make sure you have ball security because they will bring the funk. Gasket into the line, and Rutgers having trouble bringing him down. He runs like a back with power beyond his body mass. Play action, Browning for John Ross. Ross, touchdown! Welcome back, John Ross. Blitz picked up. Now Laviano under pressure. And he sacked, lost the football. Azeem Victor, one of the baddest dudes in the Pac-12 conference. Steps up, throwing long down the middle for Ross. Coming open, makes the catch. Ho-ho! Oh, touchdown, Washington. Throw it up and let John Ross run underneath it. My, oh my. This is putting the entire Pac-12 on notice. Final play of the first quarter. Rutgers can't wait for this quarter to end. And it can end soon enough. Elijah Qualls, the Washington Huskies, dominating Rutgers in Seattle. There is still plenty of time left on the clock. But this game is over. No matter what Rutgers may try, they are no match for Peterson's Huskies. The hype is real. The Huskies have proven that for now. But this is just one step in a long and ambitious journey. A lot of hard work, and it changes when you play for real. You guys answered the bell. That's awesome. You should be proud of yourself. I mean that sincerely. You come out of the gate like that and uh, put that on them. That's a, that's a hell of a job. But that's game one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we just live in the moment. So we enjoy this. We'll come back tomorrow, clean up a lot of things. Expect us to be much better even next week. Bring it on up. Bring it on up. Family on three. One, two, three. Family.